How's it going everybody and welcome to Making Onion Rings Part 2. In my first Making Onion Rings video I encountered a lot of problems that hindered my onion ring making ability and all in all it ended up being almost complete trash. The crumbs didn't stick to the onion rings and they were pretty burnt. So that's why this time I've bought breadcrumbs and I'm going to set the oil to a much lower temperature so that they don't burn. Additionally, I'm going to try and follow the recipe much closer in terms of instruction just to make sure that everything is going right. And with that, that is where we start off with these aluminum tins. You see the recipe says that you need to put the onion rings on a wire rack after coating them in the batter to allow them to drip. However, I don't have a wire rack and that's why I tried making one out of these tin foil, out of these aluminum foil trays and aluminum foil itself. At first I tried stretching it across and then cutting it long ways with a knife similar to the shape of a wire rack. However, I found that that didn't work at all because the structural integrity of the aluminum foil was just not gonna be strong enough. Oh yeah, that's not gonna hold. So I scrapped that idea and moved on to the next one. I figured, if the goal is just to drain the extra batter, why not treat it kind of like a sieve? So I just put a bunch of holes inside the aluminum foil and that, I figured, would allow all of the batter to drip out. But this proved to be a time-consuming and very noisy project, so much so to the point that my family kicked me out of the house. Oh, what's that? The pans left you a message. And that is where I pursued my very noisy endeavors outside. And it's there that I figured out that I could actually be much more rough with the foil than I had anticipated. And I was able to complete that second one way faster than the first. Albeit it wasn't anywhere near as neat. And this time around, it seemed like everything was going right. I had every ingredient that I needed. They were a lot more proper and better quality. I even had the dairy substance your dad left for 20 years ago. And of course, as always, to reduce the risk of a terrifying and disgusting bacterial infection, I washed my hands plenty well, as I do intend on sharing these with others. And even if you don't intend on sharing the food with other people, it's still important to wash your hands to keep yourself safe. And so here we are onto the first part, peeling off the skin of the onion. And I feel that this part is probably the most important. It lets you get close to your onion, to get to really know it well. I mean, how much closer can you get to a piece of food? And I feel like this is the closest food you can get to. It's not like something like a pizza or like an avocado, where you have to cut it open to get inside. With the onion, you're simply peeling off this outer skin, this layer. Onions have layers. Everything has layers. And I believe it's important every once in a while to recognize your point in society, where you are in this world, and the freedoms that you don't have. Thank you. 
teeth. But anyway, on to chopping up the onion. Even this incredibly dull and wobbly knife was no match for me. And if you will look at both of the striking angles of this Master Chef, you can see that I'm using both my Master Chef and onion chopping onion skills. But in all seriousness, I was a lot more careful to cut straight down and not jagged as to protect the rings from breaking, which quite a few did. I eventually perfected my technique as I do as a master chef and was able to successfully pull out many rings without breaking them and in a very efficient manner. This time around I was actually also using three onions instead of two as I had not acquired a large one and wanted to use the ones that I still had. It was also because last time I noticed that I had quite a lot of extra batter left over. And this time around, I also learned quite a heck of a lot in efficiency, especially when it came to coating all of the onions into the powder. I used to do them one at a time, but this time around I found that I could chuck a whole handful in and sort of just shake them around and get them all covered. This time around, I don't know what happened, maybe your dad got the wrong milk at the store, but the batter was kind of chunky and even after additional mixing it didn't seem to do anything. But that didn't really matter and I just continued to use it anyway. One chicken produce and as the recipe says to do, I whisk with a fork this time. Because I am a mature boy and I can follow the instructions and the keys to happiness. And now finally, it was time to put my DIY wire racks to the test. I began to coat the rings with the batter and set them down one by one, and so far it seemed to be working, but I wouldn't really know for sure until I coated them all in breadcrumbs and had them off of the wire racks that I had made. And when I got to the breadcrumbs, I can honestly say that it was my very most favorite part. I don't know why, but it's incredibly satisfying to coat every inch of it with breadcrumbs. And since they were fine, unlike the big coarse chunks of the stuffing that did absolutely nothing to stick, these breadcrumbs were everything I had dreamed of. And I still have plenty left. And if you were wondering, yes, I did eat a spoonful, and yes, it was delicious.
But anyway, after that was done, it was time to see how the rack worked, and upon taking the aluminum foil off, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that it had drained the batter quite well. And it was time for the final obstacle, the frying of the onion rings. I only put it onto a medium heat and used a thermometer to measure the temperature, and even though it only went up to 200 degrees, it was still good for estimating where the temperature was at, and eventually I turned the heat down even lower. I started off with small batches and the smallest onion rings at first to experiment. I was kind of going in blind since last time what the uh, recipe told me to do wasn't really working. At first I started counting, and then eventually I figured out it was best to just go off the looks of the rings, but it's about 1 minute on the first side and 30 seconds on the other. And you know what? They came out fabulous, looking crispy and golden brown. Albeit they were a little plain, but that's because they were plain breadcrumbs and there was no seasoning. It wasn't really to see how good I could get them to taste, but rather that I could even get them out at all. And with a little bit of sweet baby rays, everything was all right. And in fact, I felt so good about this whole experience that I wrote a song about it. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Oh, this is the Onion Ring song. This is a story about a man. A man who was coated in a golden tan. He was crisp with his words, and he came with a price. He was my best friend in the land of the fried. This man could tell stories that would make you cry. He always seemed better in the sun where he fried. And the hole in his heart needed to be filled. So he set on a quest to find his guild. That's when it happened. I'll tell you what. Because I shed a tear over his bad luck. You see, the only place that he belonged was in my stomach all along.